आगे चलो आगे अनुसंधान के जरिए जन कल्याण और लोक निर्माण में अपना योगदान दे रहा है और हिंदुस्तान का नाम रोशन कर रहा है यहाँ देश के अलग अलग हिस्सों से आए हुए छात्र जनसंख्या और स्वास्थ्य विज्ञान के क्षेत्र में 
अपनी अपने अध्ययन और शोध कार्य करते रहे हैं और राष्ट्र निर्माण में अपना योगदान देते रहे और ये इंस्टीट्यूट ये संस्थान हमारे लिए न सिर्फ एक शैक्षिक संस्थान है बल्कि एक परिवार है एक घर है और आज हम सब के लिए एक बड़ी खुशी का दिन है कि इस परिवार से करके एक नई इमारत में ले जा रही है तो आइए इस खुशी की इस शुभ घड़ी का आगाज करते हैं आह्वान दिन से जिसको प्रस्तुत कर रहे हैं मास्टर्स के मेरे को साथ जो जिसके रचयिता हमारे ही इंस्टीट्यूट के एक शोध छात्र 
मिस्टर पंकज पटेल लिखते हैं कि हम ख्वाब सजाते हैं करते करते आबादी का मुतालबा मुल्क के मुस्तबिल को बेहतर बनाते हैं हम ख्वाब सजाते हैं हम ख्वाब सजाते हैं ध्यय हमारा निर्मित करना एक बेहतर क्षमता भविष्य का सृजन करते हम संभावनाएं उत्साह के संचार का नवी नवी परियोजनाएं करते सर्वे और अनुसंधान का स्थापित करते हम विश्व में नए कीर्ति परचम हिंदुस्तान का त्याग परंपरा इल्म और अदब का त्याग परंपरा इल्म और अदब का हम अलाप जलाते हैं हम ख्वाब सजाते हैं हम ख्वाब सजाते हैं शोध करते हम जन जन के स्वास्थ्य और सम्मान का ज्ञान का विज्ञान का नवजात शिशु की मुस्कान का आंकड़ों का भंडार करते बुजुर्गों व जयीफों के मान का मिले पंख मिले पंख उन्मुख उड़ने को तो हम मिले पंख उन्मुख उड़ने को तो हम बुलंदियों का आकाश चुराते हैं हम ख्वाब सजाते हैं हम ख्वाब सजाते हैं करते आबादी का मुतालबा मुल्क के मुस्तबिल बेहतर बनाते हैं हम ख्वाब सजाते हैं At a such a nice poem written by one of our colleagues, sir is holding the portfolio of Union Minister of Science and Technology and Earth Sciences as well. Before joining the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, he has served as the Union Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Sir, an ENT surgeon by profession, has contributed immensely in the field of health, particularly polio eradication, tobacco control. Dr. Harsh Vardhanji, the then Health Minister of Delhi, piloted the first pulse polio campaign in Delhi in 1994, which reached nearly 1.2 million children up to age of three years. His model was so successful, which was then successfully replicated all over the nation, which led to a polio free India. He has also other a team of two jobs in 2005 which in an inspiring story of a trend setting campaign for polio eradication in Delhi his track record as a union minister since 2014 onwards has been stellar he is held in high esteem by patients for his handsome style of functioning his simplicity and his transparency at workplace so it's an honor to have you on such an important occasion of the institute We now request our director and senior professor, Professor.
Prior to this, she was ADG Architecture and was the chairperson of Central Vista Advisory Group. She has authored and contributed a large number of technical papers on various subjects, including energy efficiency, sustainability of office buildings, was internationally acknowledged in November 2017. Madam, it is our pleasure to have you with us today. We now respect our respected faculty member, Professor Saeed Unisa, to felicitate Ms. Srimati Usha Batra, Special Director General CPWD Mumbai. Also served in other important divisions such as Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. She also has since is taking the uh, has taken several initiatives for overall development of IFAS Mumbai. We now request our respected faculty member, Professor S. K. Singh, to felicitate Dr. D. K. Oja, DDG Statistics, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. Thank you, sir. Thank you, all of you. ये हमारे लिए बड़ी खुशनसीबी की बात है कि हम उस दौर में इस इंस्टीट्यूट से शिक्षा हासिल कर रहे हैं, जिस दौर में डायरेक्टर सर इस इंस्टीट्यूट के डायरेक्टर बने और हमारे रंगमा बने। उस दर उनको वेलकम एड्रेस पे बुलाने से पहले मेगेम्स, the director and senior professor IAPS. Has done his postdoctoral training at Harvard University, USA, and PhD from Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. Prior to joining IAPS a year back, he served as a professor of population studies at the Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi, and Institute of Social and Economic Change, Bangalore. He works extensively on demographic changes with focus on population and development and aging issues. He has widely published on demographic transition at Harvard University, USA. London School of Economics UK, University of Southampton UK, University of Birmingham, the, uh, the Netherlands, and International Institute of Applied System Analysis, Austria. Now we now we would like to request our res our respected director, sir, uh, Professor K S James, to deliver the lecture. Health and Family Welfare and Minister of Science and Technology and Health Sciences and also the Chairperson of the General Council IAPS Dr. Harshwadhan Ji, Honourable Minister of Public Health and Family Welfare, Government of Maharashtra, Sri Rajesh Tobe Ji. Srimadhi Ratna and Janjana, Director General, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Srimadhi Usha Patra, Special DG, CPWD. Sri DK Oja, DDG, Ministry of DDG Statistics, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Distinguished invitees, members of faculty, students, and staff, and representatives from the media. And ladies and gentlemen, to the foundation stone laying ceremony of the new academic and administrative building of IAPS today. It's a proud moment for each and everyone at IAPS, as it was a long cherished dream, which is being realized today. 
let me place on my record our deep sense of gratitude to Honorable Minister Dr. Harshwadhan Ji. Also, the keen efforts made by Srimadhi Pride Sudan, the Secretary, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, who is also the Chairperson of the Executive Council, IAPS, and particularly the Statistics Division of the Ministry to make this day possible. We are particularly honored and gratified that Honorable Minister Dr. Kashwadenji is in our midst today for laying the foundation stone for new academic and administrative building of the Institute. Dr. Harshwadhan is a great believer of the importance of taking scientific ideas to the implementation level. His passion on many issues that IIT is intensely involved in research, such as tobacco use and control, maternal and child health issues, the non communicable diseases, etc., provide us greater strength to vigorously follow and pursue such studies in this area. I sincerely thank. Honorable Minister and IAPS. Let us all put our hands together and welcome Honorable Minister to our And we are in, indeed grateful to Sri Rajesh Tope, Honorable Minister of Public Health and Family Welfare, Government of Maharashtra. I understand he is in the midst of a busy schedule and he may have to leave early from this meeting, but we are important function which is building a new academic and administrative building at IAPS. Thank you so much for being with us. Let's all put our thanks together to welcome our honorable minister. We are also deeply obliged by the presence of Srimadi Ratna and Jena, Director General of the Six Division, Srimadi Usha Bhatta, Special DG, CPWD, Sri DK Oja, UDG Statistics, MOHW where they are invaluable presence in this important occasion of this institute. I welcome them all to this August gathering as well as I thank them for their presence for this meeting. I also see many familiar faces on the audience, my teachers, the earlier professors and former directors of IITS, Professor T.K. Hoi, Professor Efra and all other distinguished dignitaries who have been invited for this function. I welcome all of you to IAPS as well as to this Foundation Lake ceremony today. Sir, around 64 Institute had a modest beginning under the joint sponsorship of Sir Dutt India. To, the Institute began by conducting a one year certificate program that is, certificate in population studies for trainees from various countries in Asia and Pacific region. It was known as Demographic Training and Research Center, DTRC, until the year 1970. It was later renamed as the International Institute for Population Studies and subsequently renamed as the International Institute for Population Sciences when the Institute was granted a deemed university status by University Grants Commission in the year 1985. Over the years, through various courses, Institute helped in training personnel from various countries of Asia and Pacific region, and our alumni occupy key positions in the field of population, health, and development in government departments, the universities in many countries, and also the pre or diploma to over 400 students, 4,000 students, of which almost 70, 700 students are from various countries, constituting nearly 20% of the students of this institute. The institute has ex expanded its seating program in recent years and currently offers three regular master's degree program, MMSc in Population Studies, a Master of Population Studies, a one-year program, and a MSc in Biostatistics and Demography, and also another master's program on the institute also offers a Master of Philosophy program for one year duration and also PhD in Population Studies, which is PhD in Population Studies. Currently, the institute has over 400 students on campus pursuing various courses. As a vibrant academic institute, IAPS during the last 63 years crafted a special place for itself in academic map of this country. The academic and research credentials of the members of the faculty and students of IAPS are now well recognized. 
the cutting edge research carried out by the institute's faculty members and students are widely used by various governmental and non-governmental organizations for formulating policies and programs, monitoring the impact of ongoing policies and programs, and to take corrective measures. I am proud to mention that institutes research and surveys have been widely used to monitor ICPD progress, MDG goals in the past, and currently being used to monitor sustainable development goals. IAPC is also perhaps a leader in carrying out large-scale surveys in recent times. Some of the pioneering surveys, survey, district-level household surveys in the past, longitudinal waiting survey of India, Youth in India study, Global Youth Adult Tobacco Surveys, and concurrent evaluation of NRHM, Survey Bank, and so on. We currently, we have in the almost in the process of con concluding the survey on National Family Health Survey fifth round, as well as the report on the National Longitudinal Survey of Aging India is already submitted for releasing by the Honorable Minister of Population, Health and Development. In recent decades, the key and single most concern was on population growth. And in the past, the, sing the key and single most concern was on population growth, family planning, higher mortality from the family planning, indirect estimation of fertility, mortality, etc. After 1994, the International Conference on Population and Development, ICPD, held in Cairo, there has been a paradigm shift in focus of research from family planning to general on reproductive and child health, women's empowerment, HIV AIDS, etc. In recent times, the gender issues, population aging, non communicable diseases, migration and urbanization, etc., occupy the central stage of research at the Institute. To be able to adapt itself to these changing situations, the Institute from time to time collaborates with the global centers of excellence across countries. I am happy to report that the Institute has currently have a collaboration with University of California, San Diego, USA on gender-related research, Harvard School of Public Health, USA, and universities of Germany for research on health and mortality-related issues, and so on. Recently, IAPS has signed two agreements, one with Baba Academic Research Center Hospital in uh, Yavana, which is located very close by, as well as Tata Memorial Hospital, for a collaborative research and students' exchange on non communicable diseases. Another key activity of the Institute is directly connected with the vision and mission of the Institute, is the capacity building of young researchers and working professionals in India and abroad. The Institute regularly conducts short term training courses of two weeks duration or more on different types, for different types of audiences. In the past, the Institute has trained officials from the Office of the Registrar General of India, Office of the Civil Registration System and researchers, etc. The Institute has also signed an agreement with the National Center for Excellence in Advanced Research on Diets at Lady Irwin College, New Delhi, to build capacity for their faculty members and graduate students in carrying out high-quality research on malnourishment in the country. With the increasing number of students and institutes desire to engage in research and teaching in new areas. The current space of five acres was insufficient to expand the courses further. I'm extremely happy that MHW has given in principle approval to lease land from Mumbai Broadcast, which is very opposite to IAPS this campus, along with the ICMR, and the process is currently underway. That will enable the institute to venture into the newer areas of its strengths, such as health data system analytics, center for aging research, non-communicable diseases, etc. in the future. We look forward to receiving continued support from the MOHW to realize our vision and expansion plans. MOHW has already formed an expert committee to reimagine new areas of research and teaching programs of IAPS with the rapid demographic changes underway in the country. I am happy that we are going to take a first step towards building a new IIPS today, along with perhaps the vision of our late Prime Minister, say Narendra Modi, on building a new India by laying foundation stone for the new academic academic building of IIPS. 
I'm confident that the new physical infrastructure and venture with new areas of research with the strong collaboration, the Institute will play a pivotal role in addressing the emerging national and global challenges on demographic and health fronts in the coming years. I want once again thank the Honorable Minister of State Minister of Health and Public Health and Family Welfare to be with us and also other distinguished dignitaries on the dais who are gracing this occasion. Thank you once again and Jay. Minister for Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. Honorable Srimati Ratna Jena, DG Statistics. Honorable Srimati Usha Batra, Special DG. Honorable Director and Senior Professor Raya Pias, Professor James. Professor Bhagat, distinguished senior retired faculties sitting over here, all the distinguished faculties of this esteemed institute, print and media persons present over here, and my dear students. It's indeed an honor to witness this function of groundbreaking ceremony of academic and administrative building of IIPS. At the outset, let me take the upon gathering sitting over here. A very warm welcome to Dr. Harshwardhan. My father had been a member of parliament, so I am very well connected with parliament. And I am also the fifth in Maharashtra. So whatever I have read about Dr. Hashimoto, a very workaholic person, and we are very fortunate to have him as a health and family health minister. So today, from my perspective, I should say that I have got a guru who can guide me because he is also five times a mayor and senior politician from Delhi. In this campus, I have come for the very first time. A lot many times I have passed and all very energetic students sitting over here. This institute, and I'm really happy to learn that this institute is the only institute in South Asia specific for higher learning population science. The syllabus in itself is relevant, futuristic, student-centered and locally competitive. And so it is getting employed. That is the best part of it. And you people are gathering data which is being used by government of India, in parliament, in our state government. So the research work which is going over here is really commendable. And so I really congratulate all of you. From the perspective of health department of government of Maharashtra, I wish that you internship in government of Maharashtra. And I welcome all of you with the red carpet to do the internship. 
the great works which you people have done in NFHS 4 provides data of different level estimates for many important indicators. It will be a mutual benefit for each other that the uh, government of Maharashtra, especially my health department, I desire that IRPS may support the public health department for training the officers in my department. All of them will be great help for social audit, for evaluation of different national programs and also for the data analysis in my health department. This is a groundbreaking ceremony for academic and administrative building. But Honorable Professor James, on the lunch table, he mentioned that there are issues of hostel. Hostel is hostel accommodation is not sufficient for the students studying over here. And the reason is that they are not getting FSI for floor of space index and some files are pending with MCGM at least in the urban development department. So I take this responsibility that and any work from the government of Maharashtra side or with the government of Maharashtra side will be done in time that I assure this out of the And so nothing much to say, a small humble request from the Minister of Health from the entire 11 crores population of Maharashtra, she is the health department and family health department will provide ample funds through NHS, through the National Health Mission to cater the needs of the health services in Maharashtra. Thank you, one and all. My Paramandir Karna Chaunga, Shrimati Usha Bhattramayamte. आप केंद्रीय लोक निर्माण विभाग मुंबई में बतौर विशेष महानिदेशक कार्यरत मेहमान और सभा को संबोधित करेंगे Honorable Minister of Public Health and Family Care, Government of Maharashtra, Shri Rajesh Tokhe Ji. I would like to thank you for your support. I would like to thank you for your support. I would like to thank you for your support. I would like to thank you for your support. I would like to thank you for your support. So, I would like to thank you for your support. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Anjan Jaina, ISS, Director General Statistics, MOHFW, Shri D. K. Oja, ISS, Professor K. S. Jain, Director and Senior Professor, IAPS, Dignitaries, Professors, Staff, Students of the Institute, Ladies and Gentlemen. It's my greatest pleasure to welcome all of you to this foundation laying soft money today of the institution of educational excellence which is well known across the world. This institute has established itself as a premier institute for training and research in population studies for developing countries in the Asia and Pacific region. I am happy to note that the institute offers master and PhD degree in population studies and has helped 
in building a nucleus of professionals in the field of population and health in various countries of Asia Pacific region, Africa and North America. For carrying out all these activities, the institute needs new infrastructure to accommodate staff, faculty and classrooms. In order to make the institute a center of excellence and contribute for development of the country, Government of India has sanctioned new infrastructure development projects phase 1 and project management work has been entrusted to CPWD. The project has two subjects. One is the construction of new administrative come academic building which is ground plus six story with auditorium of 418 capacity and the second is director's bungalow which is ground plus one story. Both the works are taken up including all allied services by CPWD. The new administrative come academic building will have reception, classroom, seminar hall, convocation from auditorium, computer from data center, office rooms, canteen, etc. with the latest amenities and specifications. The building is designed as a green building to have three-star rating and recently CPWD has developed its own green rating manual which is good so it will have the same rating as well also. With provisions for rainwater harvesting, solar water heaters, solar power generation 30 kW, use of recycled water for flushing and gardening by treating raw sewage to 100 KLD sewage treatment plant. Various energy saving fixtures and as well as low water consumption fixtures will also be used. Green materials like ply ash in concrete and ASE block masonry, low VOC paints and solar reflective paints on the rooftop are also proposed to your health and family welfare government of India in general. We are already having full-fledged exclusive dedicated project unit for execution of the above works. We would like to submit that CPWD has undergone radical reform in its functioning, use of new technologies, innovation, digitization, execution of major projects in EPC mode, advanced project management tools, in-house green and energy rating system are some of the highlights of these reforms. It has facilitated execution of the works well within time, quality and economy and well-established construction practices of adherence to the quality formalities and specifications will execute the work in a hassle-free manner to your best satisfaction, sir. Once again, I thank Honorable Union Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India and Health Minister, Government of Maharashtra for their inspiring leadership for sparing their valuable time and laying foundation stone which is yet to be laid of the project and commitment to infrastructure development. Thank you. Jai. Thank you, ma'am. Sabah Sam. Garikram ka sinsala aage bada tuye. Ab main pure adab aur saman ke saath mic par aapne kya karna chahunga? Shri Mati, Shri Mati, Radha Anjan Jaina ma'am ko. आप स्वास्थ्य एवं परिवार कल्याण मंत्रालय भारत सरकार की सांख्यिकी महानिदेशक हैं मेहमान और सभा को संबोधित यूनियन मिनिस्टर ऑफ हॉर हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर मिनिस्टर ऑफ आर्ट साइंसेस एंड साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी डॉक्टर हर्षवर्धन जी ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर of Public Health from Maharashtra Government, Sri Nadesh Topeji, Srimati Usha Badra, Special DG Western Region, CPWD, Professor James, and Director IIPS, Sri Nidhi Boja, DDG, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Distinguished Invitees, Faculty, Staff, and Dear Students of this organization, and Ladies and Gentlemen. We are indeed proud of IITS, an institution of world repute in demographic training and research. Personally for me, to be associated with this institute is a matter of privilege and pride. 
Today I am here in of IIPS, which is going to be performed by our Honorable Minister for Health and Family Welfare. IIPS, a deemed university with an international institute, is an international institute which covers population science as an interdisciplinary subject. IIPS continue to play a very important role for the government, particularly for the health ministry and for the people of India by providing critical inputs for policy makers to guide them to take policy formulation in the right direction. The institution has expanded in teaching programs in recent years by introducing several courses, but the infrastructure development did not keep in pace with the courses. There is still large scope of expansion of the teaching, research and outreach activities of this institute. The ministry will be providing all possible support for the progress of the institute to achieve its vision and goals. One of the important contribution of IIPS is NFHS and Government of India, especially the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, uses NFHS data very profusely and it guides our health and family care programs to be implemented in the grassroots level and with the right efforts and right direction. They are also doing various other surveys like last year, global and adult tobacco survey, etc. These reports emerging from this institute will help the department in government and the Ministry of Health and Welfare. The data on NFHS and research publications will be very important, especially the NFHS 5, which is going to be published in the end of this year. The institute has a major infrastructure deficiency and I am confident that the new building once completed with the state-of-art facility will enable better spread of its teaching research and academic programs. The ministry is aware of the expansion plan of the building of this institute for the coming years and the ministry's support will always be there for any such efforts. We have provided in principle approval for the lease of Mumbai Port Trust land opposite to the institute as the land and infrastructure in the present campus is limited. The ministry has already formed a restructuring committee to look into the new departments and centers needed for the institute with the changing times. A center for aging, survey research and design, health data analysis are the few areas to be mentioned where the institute plans to expand its domain in the coming years. I am happy to find that the institute has signed a MOU with the two prominent hospitals as Professor James said, Mumbai Tata Memorial Center and Baba Academic Research Center to expand its research area in the field of health and non-communicable diseases. This collaboration will mutually benefit these institutions in furthering research on health and illness, illness sharing academic and teaching capabilities, undertaking joint research projects and publication of research papers, internship and training of students. I really appreciate the important development which will benefit everyone involved in it. We at the Health Ministry are looking forward to the continued contribution of IIPS and expansion of its academic activities. I am sure with all these new initiatives, your expertise and commitments, this institute will scale further heights in research and training in demography and health studies. I am also here happy to say that these things will be done under the able guidance and leadership of our Honorable Minister Dr. Harshabhatma. I thank you all of you for your success and the best wishes for each one of you. Thank you. बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया मैम आपका आपने अपने मूल्यवान शब्दों और विचारों से हमें नवाजा आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद 
और अब वो वक्त ऐसा रहा है जिसके लिए ये ये कार्यक्रम आयोजित किया गया हम सब यहाँ उपस्थित हुए यानी वो वक्त जब ज्ञान के उस मंदिर का शिलान्यास किया जाएगा जो आने वाले वक्त में इसी जमीन पर तामीर होने वाला है मैं अपने इंस्टीट्यूट के डायरेक्टर सर से रेस्पेक्टफुली गुजारिश करूँगा कि वो माननीय मंत्री जी से प्रस्तावित भवन के विधवत शिलान्यास का अनुरोध करें आप सभी अपना स्थान ग्रहण कर लें। Now we would like to request Honourable Minister Sir to deliver the Presidential Address. So please. Sri Rajesh Tope Ji, Minister, Honourable Minister for Public Health, Government of Maharashtra, former Directors of this very prestigious international institute for population sciences dr t k roy dr f ram dr k s professor k s james director and senior professor here shrimati usha batra ji shrimati ratna jaina ji shri डी के ओझा जी ऑल द अदर डिस्टिंग्विश सीनियर प्रोफेसर फॉर्मर टीचर्स एसोसिएटेड विद दिस प्रेस्टिजियस ऑल द वेरी ब्राइट यंग स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ दिस इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ इंटरनेशनल रिप्यूट वेल फ्रेंड्स थैंक यू सो मच for being with me this afternoon first of all let me congratulate you you are going to have a new building now in another 21 months from now and uh, this is a, uh, going to be a state of the art building with all modern facilities uh, the cpwd people have even written the exact date of handing it over to you in the booklet so that's why i said it is going to be 21 months 6th december 2021 as the date of handing over of the new building you know since the, the 6th december is a very important date for many reasons but anyway uh, congratulations to all of you Uh, I have been working in the field of uh, health uh, for almost uh, over four decades now. I uh, almost uh, from the mid seventies uh, when I entered a medical school. The first uh, decade was spent uh, as a medical student doing my graduation, post graduation. Then another decade was spent. Uh, working establishing my practice and also working for the medical associations and then the next decade um, i was a health minister in delhi and uh, also the later part of the decade uh, i was working for the world health organization for all the southeast asian countries and then the next decade uh, was almost uh, the time when i spent uh, 
with the World Health Organization and also for my own organization in various capacities in the National Party and the State BJP. Then finally, last five, six years, I have been uh, fortunate to have uh, been associated with uh, the cabinet of one of the most enterprising and uh, visionary Prime Minister of India in modern times, uh, Shri Narendra Modi ji, who uh, gave me the privilege to work for health, to work for science and technology, to work for earth sciences, to work for environment and climate change. The uh, point that I want to make is that uh, it also, although I know about this institution for almost uh, since the time I was in medical school, because it's uh, certainly a very, very privileged institution, very, very popular institution, uh, respected and uh, revered by almost everyone in the field of health, whether it is inside the country, outside the country, nationally, internationally, in all circles, is one of the uh, most important. That's why I think uh, it has been given the status of a deemed university also. That's why you call it an international institution for population sciences and all. And uh, I was trying to find out how uh, are uh, the uh, students uh, selected for this prestigious university? So I was told that uh, when over uh, two, three thousand students appear, then only a uh, few dozen, maybe a hundred or odd students, they get uh, selected here. And all those who appear for the uh, most prestigious course on population studies here, they are already postgraduates. So I think uh, the very fact that uh, even after doing one post-graduation, you have come for the second post-graduation, then a uh, PhD and all those post-doctoral things, that at least speaks uh, volumes about your intellectual acumen and your ability and you can clap for yourself if you want. So, uh, it's, it's really a uh, privilege, uh, I think, uh, to be with uh, all of you. Uh, uh, I have also, in the last four or five decades, worked very uh, passionately for the field of health. So, this uh, institution's uh, name, uh, types of helps that, that is being extended to the drafting of the health policies or the reforms that are introduced in the health policies in the country from time to time through your extensive surveys, etc., and the findings that you present to the government. That has been very, very meaningful over the years. Last uh, 48 uh, hours uh, for me have been very, very important and very, very meaningful. I got the privilege to visit three important institutions about which I had heard a lot, but uh, I never had the privilege to be able to uh, look look at them from very close quarters. Uh, the day before yesterday, I was uh, part of the, the golden uh, jubilee celebrations of the National Institute for Research and Reproductive Studies. That's a very, very important prestigious organization of uh, ICMR here. And uh, uh, today morning I was uh, again part of a uh, part of another uh, very important institution of uh, again a national institution of uh, public health uh, about uh, uh, public health research and uh, training and uh, there too I had the privilege to dedicate a new building uh, to the uh, public health people. Uh, already de de delivering for many, many years, 48 hours. So I really feel so happy and extremely uh, privileged and blessed that I got this opportunity to be here. It was, I think, a very, very short notice uh, for which I uh, had conveyed my consent to be part of this function because for the last uh, uh, 25 years in my public life, my the formula has been that if I go to a particular place for one thing, I don't do one thing, I try to do at least half a dozen things so that each and every minute is optimally utilized. 
So once I leave this place, I am going to Tata Memorial. And, uh, and that's how I try to plan my things uh, so that uh, we can uh, uh, utilize our time in the best possible manner. You all know, I think uh, I don't need to talk to you about uh, health policies or health issues because uh, you are already aware about them. You are already doing so much of research and studies about them. And uh, whatever you have done here, I think uh, I was told uh, by my colleague in the ministry that uh, there is hardly any unemployment for these uh, bright students who do, do their second uh, master's here. They immediately, as soon as they finish or maybe before they finish anything, they are like uh, um, caught by uh, various institutions and institutions not only um, of Indian origin but international institutions, UN organizations and you get a lot of opportunity to have exposure uh, outside the uh, country also. So uh, uh, what I am now talking to is uh, I think a group of very young bright students who can actually, who have the intellectual ability and the potential to actually give some concrete things to the country as per the need of the country. As I said earlier, we are in uh, uh, at a very, very important milestone in our country's history. I don't uh, say that because I belong to the government of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, but I say that with utmost sincerity and commitment and conviction because I have been uh, watching him uh, from the closest of quarters as a colleague cabinet minister. That we are very fortunate to have a, a very, very uh, bright and uh, I would say very, very passionate prime minister who really wants to deliver, who really wants to change uh, India, who really wants to deliver a, a really new India to all Indians by uh, 2022 end and uh, where he wants that uh, we should be able to bring back smile on everybody's face, we should be able to ensure good health, good education, good nutrition to every child in this country, we should be able to uh, take care of the interests of the women, we should be able to take care of the interests of the elderly and we should be able to wipe out all these isms in the country, whether it is uh, terrorism or separatism, etc., etc. So many things uh, happen in this country, unfortunately. And he wants only uh, nationalism and humanism to actually ultimately prevail in the country. So this is his uh, dream and desire. I very uh, fondly uh, remember that in a function in 2017, I was part of the function, I was sitting, uh, sitting in the first row and that function was happening at our party headquarters in 2017. And with a lot of emotions uh, in his voice, he said, for a moment, just imagine that you are sitting here in front of me in 1942. And uh, he said, uh, you remember that in 1942 we had a quit India movement and within five years of that we got independence and that was 1947. This was a, a coincidence, it was 2017 function and he said I also want that uh, today itself uh, you all uh, pledge with me, you all start dreaming with me that by the 2022 uh, when we have a new, uh, uh, you can say, uh, we complete 75 years of our independence, we deliver a new India to all Indians. And uh, it should be just like that 42 to 47, it should be 200 and, uh, 2017 to 2022. And he said with a lot of emotions and a very choked voice and all. And uh, I, I know for sure that he has been working day in and day out uh, since then, he started working for that since uh, 2014 itself. And uh, we all remember that when he became the Prime Minister of the country in 2014, he, he had in fact uh, become a symbol of the aspirations of uh, every Indian at that time before the elections. And uh, more particularly, he had become a symbol of the aspirations of the young India also. And 
last five years he developed uh, many programs, he had many visionary uh, ideas, he had many missions which he launched. At every mission he not only launched, he pursued that mission with a lot of passion and at the end of his five years uh, term, we could see that there were uh, millions and crores of beneficiaries uh, around every mission. But he still says that he wants uh, that uh, most of the unresolved issues of this country that we have been facing even after 70 years of independence, we should find them resolved by 2022 and uh, we should ensure that all the sufferings of the poor people of this country, they are ultimately alleviated. And that is the dream with which he uh, lives and that is the dream with which he uh, commits himself uh, um, day in and day out. And that is the dream for which he says that we all should also have a similar dream. Even if it is a small dream, let us all start dreaming about it. And let us all start uh, blending our dream into his dream and then ultimately be a contributor to a new India. And I think uh, the uh, biggest contributor to the new India can be the uh, professionals of this country. And they, they, that is where he uh, talks about uh, uh, professional social responsibility, scientific social responsibility, even to our scientists, even to our health professionals, to everyone we say that uh, we have to appreciate what is our uh, responsibility for the country. As you all know uh, that uh, uh, with the help of uh, the policies that have been uh, drafted in the country uh, uh, from uh, committed efforts by young people like you, India is at a stage where we have, uh, you can say, achieved a significant progress in the field of uh, health now, whether it is providing adequate manpower, whether it is having adequate number of uh, medical, another uh, six to seven years from now, we will see that our doctor uh, population ratio will be as per WHO uh, standards. In the last uh, five years itself, uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee started with one, uh, converting one AIMS into six AIMS. Uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi got uh, six AIMS uh, converted into 22 AIMS in the country. And uh, in the last uh, uh, six years itself, it's not even six years completed, we have almost uh, added uh, uh, 157 new medical colleges to this country. Uh, added 29,000 MBBS seats to this country. We have added uh, over 17,000 PG seats to this country. And uh, in the uh, process of delivering one of the most ambitious uh, health programs, uh, Ayushman Bharat, where already 86, 87, 7 lakh uh, poor people in this country have enjoyed the benefits in terms of their tertiary care being delivered to them at their doorsteps in any of the 22,000 empaneled hospitals in the country and also the process of uh, uh, delivering 1.5 lakh health and wellness centers all across the manor where 30,000 have already been delivered. And these health and wellness centers have already become the, uh, you can say, the, the centers for developing small positive health, preventive health, and uh, promotive health movements within the country. And that's what is uh, the real thing happening in public health. Uh, millions of people have been screened for various diseases like diabetes, hypertension, cancers of the oral cavity, cervix, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, breast, etc., etc. The point that I am trying to make is that uh, already we have a, we have a uh, robust uh, surveillance system. You know how uh, efficiently the whole country has been able to handle the uh, likely threat of coronavirus entering our country in epidemic proportions. We did not allow Ebola virus to enter the country in 2014. We did not allow Nipah virus to grow in epidemic proportions in the country. We did not allow the swine flu to in epidemic proportions. It's all because of the contribution of the 
a great number of health professionals who have been able to develop a very robust uh, uh, system uh, within the country. And the country is already doing so much too with the support of uh, the policies given uh, by uh, people like you. We have been able to bring down our maternal mortality rates and especially I have to congratulate uh, and since I am in Maharashtra, Maharashtra needs to be uh, commended for their efforts because what we had to achieve in the as a sustainable development goal in 2030 we have already achieved it in terms of maternal mortality being something like uh, between 60 and 70 here. So uh, maternal mortality rates, childhood uh, mortality, under 5 mortality, infant mortality, all these things and now the way we are trying to ensure and I have been very uh, passionately pursuing the fact that uh, not a single pregnant woman should die in the system. And if a single pregnant woman with a preventable cause for death dies, uh, the thousands of people like all of us, uh, if uh, we find a single child dying because of a uh, diarrhea death, even after 70 years of independence, even if we allow a single child to be left, without a vaccine preventable disease being given to him because there are already dozen of, dozens of vaccines are available in the uh, 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 universal immunization program. But even then we find 10, 20, 30 percent people, children are left without the vaccine. Uh, maybe lack of knowledge because of their lack, because of their personal issues. They have to work uh, throughout the day to have a uh, uh, small living to